Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Alana Burris, the CGI Nerd, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at creating this little project here where we have a um, object, it doesn't have to be a planet, but if you do want to get access to planet and make it yourself, look at the iCard up here um, that's popping up right now. But we're taking the planet and then we're starting off rotating the object and rotating it with blueprint scripting, and then we are... I'm taking it, moving it across the screen, and after we start moving it across the screen, we actually take a look at setting limits. So once it hurts a certain value, it moves in the opposite direction, and then again, when it hits a certain value in the opposite direction, it will start turning around and moving in the opposite direction again. So um, we're going to be doing all of this with blueprints, and I hope you guys find it interesting. We'll get started right now. Okay, to start off, um, we're going to create a blueprint class. And it's going to be an actor. I'm going to call it planet underscore BP for blueprint. And then I'm going to open that. It's small here. And now what I'm going to do is take the low polygon planet and bring that in here so that we can work with it. The first thing I'm going to try to do is get it to rotate. Um, I'm going to do that with the event tick, so I don't need the other setups here, and basically what I want to do is do a um, set relative, and then we can do specifically location or um, or rotation, location, rotation, and so forth. But we can also do the transform, which will, oops, that's a reset, sorry. I chose the wrong one. What we want is the set relative transform. So over here you can say it says reset, but I want um, just a set. So set relative transform and we can make it a little bit easier by just selecting the one that's already connected to the planet since it's associated with this right here and it brings this extra connection already for us Move this right here there we go so now that I have that um, let's split these uh, transforms and then here we can see the rotation going to uh, split that there for the rotation and the we'll do the rotation first before we go much further okay so now that we have that um, we need to get whatever the um, rotation is for the um, object that we have right now so we can say um, Get rotation. So here, uh, get world rotation for the low poly planet. And then here, let's split it. We have the roll, pitch, and yaw. So if we go to the viewport here, select this, and go to our rotation tool. Rotate it, and you can see that while we rotate it, it says yaw in the center. So that gives us th the attribute that we want to manipulate. So in the event graphs, we know that the yaw is going to be the object that we're going to manipulate. But we need to set all of these other values so that way it doesn't go crazy. And then what I'm going to do is say... Um,
uh, float plus float. Gonna connect the yacht into that float and connect it into the transform. Right now it's just adding one to it. So let's see how this looks right now. Um, let's throw in that blueprint into the scene. Gonna make sure that the Y is set to zero. Just so it's centered there and then let's bring it up. And then let's play. So here you can see that it's spinning over and over and over again. Okay. That is great. That's exactly how we want it to be working for the rotation. Now with um, this, I want it to move out this way, maybe 100 units, then come back this way, 100 units, and then ping pong back and forth. Um, but let's get it moving first. And it'll be really simple. We have the location right here. We can split it so that way we, we have the X, Y, and Z values. Then, now that I have that set, let's move these a little bit higher so that we have some space here. I'm going to tell it to get location. And if we scroll down, we should be able to get the world location of the low poly planet. We can split this like we did earlier. I know it's going to be the Y channel that we are going to be modifying. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it um, float plus float. So I can connect that in there, and basically what that does, it adds one um, each tick to the translation in the Y. So let's go here, play. Whoa, it just shot out. You can see it going way out that way. Um, let's double check the planet here. We have the planet, the Y, if we set it to zero, should be here. It goes in either direction here. Let's play this. That is interesting. So, oh, I know why. Um, let's go inside of the blueprint. Um, we're connecting the current world location here, and we don't need to get any of those because the values on there it does have a value. We just need it to go to zero. Um, actually, we don't even... Yeah. Let's try that now. Play. And we can see now it's moving across that. So um, if I stop this, I'll show you what was happening on the planet we have the planet blueprint here in the scene it has an x value and a z value and they're pretty high so that's what it was pushing it where it was going in a weird position but we just needed to add zero to it so um, it keeps it in the same x and z location okay so let's do the ping-ponging action and for that, we're going to um, set up a condition. So after this happens, we can say do a branch. And the condition is, let's get the world actually uh, float is greater than or equal to so 
here, if it's greater than or equal to, we want to get that y value here. Actually, whatever the y value is being printed out from here. So if it's greater than or equal to 100, then we want to set a value. Um, and we don't have a value right now. We need to create a variable and we'll plug it into here and then we can change that. So that way it's going to be its movement speed. So I'm going to create a variable here, call it movement speed. There we go. Go here and I'm going to make sure that it's a float. And then we can say get movement speed and connect it directly here and let's compile this so that we can set up a default value the default value is going to be one okay so it's taking the y position adding it and then checking it over here um, then if it is greater than or equal to one what we'll say is um, we'll take this movement speed and set movement speed and then here we want to do a float times float so we're going to take the movement speed so let's get movement speed and connect that into the top value and then the bottom value we'll put it negative one so when we multiply it by negative one, it's going to go in the opposite direction. There you go. Okay, let's compile this. And we'll test it out really quick. So it should go out a certain distance, then it turns around. And then when it comes this way, it's going to keep on going because we haven't told it um, anything to do otherwise. So... Let's go back into the blueprint. And here in the blueprint, if it's false, we can go into another branch. And in this one, what we can do is create a float is less than or equal to a number and I'm going to set a negative 100 and the float is going to be that same value and then we can connect that into the condition so if it's true we're going to have it set the value as well so we're doing the same thing here um, it's just going to be moving and not changing it if it's in between negative 100 and 100. But if it either goes to either extreme, it's going to go ahead and multiply that value by 100 or by negative 1. So it will reverse the value. So let's compile this and play it. So we should see it hit at 100. And when it comes over here somewhere, it should hit and go back the other way. So that's a really kind of basic look at starting to get um, some motion with blueprints inside of Unreal Engine. Um, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Bye.